Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. Today I've been sort of called or I feel moved or inspired to talk about liminal space. And this is something that, until about a year or two ago, I didn't actually really know the name of it. Um, it was actually at a Bath Positive Living group session, which Nikki Minter led, where she introduced the concept of liminal space. And it's like all truths. When you hear somebody talk about it, it's like you've always known it. I just didn't know the word for it. And I feel like this great pause, as people are calling it, during coronavirus, is a liminal space. And liminal space means the threshold. The threshold from one state into another state. It can be um, a physical thing, like a parking lot, where you go because you're going travelling from somewhere to somewhere. Or an airport lounge, or a stairwell, or something like that. But I think that it also has a much, much deeper, more significant spiritual aspect as well. And that's really what I want to explore today. So for me, a liminal space is a space of transition. A transition from one way of being into another. And it's not always an easy space, because you bring all your uncertainties and your insecurities and your fears, and you sit with them, <laughs> which sounds like absolute hell. And there's huge uncertainty because you just don't know where the next path is leading. You don't know where you're going on to. But I'd like to put it to you that that space, that sitting space, that holding space, is transformational in itself. And I'd like to share some tools with you to help you use it to the absolute best of your ability so that you can transform. And I've just read a blog post by Alan Seal. And he's got some beautiful quotes in there. One quote which I'd love to share with you is not from him, actually. It's by Blaise Pascal, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. And the quote is, Somewhere, something incredible is waiting to be known. And I just think that, that if, you, if you tap into your core, into your truth, into your soul, we all know that. We all know that something somewhere wonderful and amazing is waiting to be born. And we're part of that. We're part of that something amazing and wonderful. And what we're going through right now is a shedding, a shedding of our fears, a shedding of our insecurities. Um, and we can either embrace it or we can fight it. And the more we fight it, the more uncomfortable and the more um, scary and fearful we'll most likely be. But if we embrace it and with a couple of tools, we step into that unknowing, we step into that fear, into our insecurities, and we look at them and see them clearly, and own them, and in owning them, they lose their power. Then we ourselves transform, and in us transforming, we then create the something wonderful, because we are the something wonderful. Alan Seal also shared in his blog, and I'll put a link to it, and actually on his YouTube, he's got a couple of YouTube videos, I'll pop the links to those in, in the notes below as well. He talks about a caterpillar turning into a butterfly, and I think that that's so incredibly true. You know, the caterpillar goes into the chrysalis, it most likely has no conscious knowledge that it's about to turn into a butterfly. It doesn't even most likely really know why it is drawn to go into this chrysalis, but it goes. And it spends time cocooned in its little chrysalis. And I feel that that's where we are. We're all in our homes. We, we're all with ourselves, with our thoughts and our feelings. And what I've been doing, and by no means am I saying this is the only way that you can support yourself through this process, but I'm just going to share a couple of tools that I've been using um, to help you at this time, because I know a lot of people have been struggling. So one of them is breathing um, and just being with the emotion that's coming up, be it fear, be it insecurity, be it self-doubt, be it whatever it is that's coming up for you. Because the emotion in itself is not a thing, it's just an energy. And the more you're able to be with it and just accept it, the quicker it will pass through. Because like anything, the more you interact with it, the more you attach to it, the more you attach to it, the more it stays because it kind of gets knitted and knotted. 
So the more you try to figure it out or try to resolve it or try to engage with it, the more you are focusing on it and keeping it here in the present. So just breathe. And I mean, one of the most simple ones that I know, and you can use any breathing technique that you know, and I'll put some links to some breathing methods as well in the notes, is to breathe in for four, hold for four, breathe out for eight. Breathe in for four, hold for four, breathe out for eight. And just focus on where the emotion is sitting inside of you and give yourself space to be with it. The next thing that I would recommend is just be gentle on yourself. Um, I think we've all noticed that everybody has ups and downs through this time. Um, when you're having a down, don't make yourself wrong. Don't beat yourself up. Don't make it worse for yourself. Be gentle. Ask yourself, what do I need right now to nurture myself in this time? What food would be the best food for me to eat to feel positive and to feel nurtured? You know, if you need to sleep longer, go and sleep longer. <laughs> Whatever's going on in the universe at this moment in time, maybe we just consciously aren't aware of it and your body needs to go into its little cocoon and sleep for a bit longer and be kind and let yourself do that. If you feel you need exercise but you're not up to your normal amount of exercise, be gentle. Just tone it down a little bit. Do something that makes you feel invigorated and not depleted. And above all, think kind thoughts about yourself. Yes, you might be experiencing fear. Yes, you might be experiencing self-doubt. But you don't need to beat yourself up for experiencing those things. Think kind thoughts. Understand everyone is going through this at the moment. It's a, it's a space of transition and embrace it. I see the fear and the, all of those sort of negative emotions that a lot of us have been experiencing. It's a shedding, to me, it's a shedding of the past. It's a letting go of a fear-based way of living. Um, and we almost have to experience it in an intensified way to be able to fully see it for what it is and let it go. Um, I've also been running, and I'm sure I've mentioned this in a number of these other uh, YouTube videos and podcasts, um, I've been running her Pono Pono sessions, and I'll put a link to the group and the times in the notes below as well. Um, and the reason for that is doing her Pono Pono brings you back to a space of connection with all that is, with source, with the universe, with God, with Allah, whatever it is that you want to call it. And it helps me to see my wrong thinking, the fear thoughts, the self-doubt, the self-sabotage, all of those things. It, it helps me to see them for what they really are, my wrong thinking, my subconscious regurgitated stuck thoughts. And it helps me to step out of that into a space of being with all that is. And in that space, I find true healing can really happen. And it doesn't require me to do anything other than step into that space. And when I'm in that space, I leave, I let go and let it up to source, to God, to whatever it is that you call it, to do the healing for me. Um, and that's really what I'm trying to use my liminal space for. I'm trying to get out of my head as much as possible because I know the answers aren't in my head. My, if my head had the answers, we wouldn't be sitting here in this liminal space. But it's to sink out of that noise in your head, out of the confusing thoughts that are trying to find control, trying to make sense of what is and what doesn't make sense because we don't know what's coming. And just to be present. Um, the other thing that I found really helpful is a gratitude practice. Um, by focusing on the positive things, even the tiniest little things like sunlight through the windows, helps me to, to open up and to, to have an open heart. And I think that's the final thing, is that when we're in fear, we close, we pull back, we shut ourselves off. And when we do that, we stop the flow of the universe of source through us. So my commitment is through this process, through the ups and downs and the fear and the anxiety, is to try and remain open. <laughs> and I know that's easier said than done. But using the practices I've spoken about, the Ho'oponopono or any clearing process, using gratitude, um, using thankfulness, um, using being of service, it helps me to remain open. And in being open, I allow source to flow through me and to clear and to heal and to support my transition into whatever wonderful experience is awaiting on the other side of this liminal space. And remember, if you've enjoyed this, please like, subscribe and share it as much as you feel moved to. I've got lots of notes below the video.
So any of the things I've spoken about, if you want to follow up on them, you can find them there. I also offer a free five day, five steps towards self-awareness course, where you can most likely find lots more tools to help you on your journey in this liminal space. For any other resources, you can find them on my website, www.britannia.com. B-R-I-T-T-T-A-N-Y-A.com. So much love from me to you. Bye-bye.